What's up everyone, welcome to Workshop Rebuild. In today's video, I'll share with you guys how to dismantle and repair hydraulic couplers. You'll find these hydraulic couplers on various different types of equipment. This happens to be from a John Deere 400 series garden tractor. The same coupler you'll find on the John Deere 300 series and a Bowens HG20. So without further ado, let me share with you guys which products I'll be using in today's video, which hand tools I'll be using, and which custom tool you'll have to make to dismantle this hydraulic coupler. The two products I will be using in today's video are Blue Loctite, which is a thread sealant, and I will be using assembly grease for some of the ball bearings, which we will be installing later on. I have all the tools laid out over here, which I will be using in today's video. I have snap ring pliers, I have an o-ring pick i have two flathead screwdrivers one is very small if you guys don't have an o-ring pick you guys can just choose a flathead screwdriver which is very small up front this is also a very small one but this one is a little bit stronger we have a 9 16 wrench 5 8 wrench and three quarter i do have a breaker bar which has a 9 16 socket on it to remove one of the fittings on the hydraulic coupler over here, I have a wire wheel. This will be used in the handrail. And I'll share that with you guys on the vise later on. I have up above a digital caliper and a marker just in case. Off to the right, I have an assortment of drills and the drill that I will be using in today's video is 11 30 seconds of an inch. And this will be used to custom make this tool which you will need to dismantle the hydraulic coupler. To make this custom tool, you will need a handsaw and or if any of you guys have any electric tools at home, uh, it is possible to make this with some of those electric tools. Before I get into the custom tool, I will share with you guys the disassembled hydraulic coupler right in front of me. I will share with you guys an old coupler which I still have to fix and one which I previously rebuilt. So let me share with you guys a close up view. Off to the left of the screen, we have an old hydraulic coupler. And on the right, we have a refurbished and rebuilt hydraulic coupler. This will be the outcome of our rebuild and the outcome of today's video. So this is how it will look like on the outside. And the internals have been renewed, so everything should be fine on this hydraulic coupler. And we'll test it once it's installed. In the middle of the screen, you guys will see the disassembled hydraulic coupler. I will be working from the main body of the hydraulic coupler upward and from the main hydraulic coupler downward so everything that's above is internally and this fitting is the last thing which closes everything off on the hydraulic coupler everything which is underneath is outside of the hydraulic coupler and we have one o-ring which sits internally in this body you're probably asking yourself what restricts the oil from pushing outward when nothing is connected the answer is this ball bearing right here and inside of the main body on the back end we have a ball bearing seat so when this right here is pressurized and pushed up against the seat inside it does not allow fluid to pass or go through this main body the next thing that backs this ball bearing is a small spring the spring is centered and held in place by this end cap and at the same time it is threaded on all three points and this cap will fit in the back of this hydraulic coupler body. From the hydraulic coupler forward we have four more components, three are external and the o-ring is internal. So the o-ring will be mounted within the hydraulic coupler body and this allows a perfect seal when the male fitting is inserted into the body. The next part is a spring. The spring will be mounted around and over the hydraulic coupler body. The next part is a sleeve, which allows you to compress the spring back and the spring will push it once again forward. Now to lock this sleeve in place, we will have to push this back and the C-clip will mount on the very end of this valve body. I will share with you guys a close-up on this. 
finished coupler. This is how it will look like. We have the C-clip on the very end, which will not allow the sleeve to push off of the body. On the main body, we have one more important part, and that is the locking mechanism from the male side to the female body. As you guys can see around the perimeter, we have eight bores, which will hold eight bearing balls, which are laid out in front of me. These eight bearing balls get pushed into these bores. And once everything over here is assembled, they go in place and it looks something like this. The bearing ball sizes in today's video are standard sizes. The eight small bearing balls, which are around the perimeter of this hydraulic coupler are one eighth of an inch. So that's this bearing ball right here. And the bigger bearing ball, which is the main bearing ball, which does not allow fluid to pass through the hydraulic coupler body is 11 30 seconds of an inch. So that is the big bearing ball right here. I just shared with you guys the old hydraulic coupler, the new hydraulic coupler, and the disassembled hydraulic coupler in the middle of the screen before. Now I'll share with you guys my prefabricated custom tool which I already made for this hydraulic coupler. You will need this to remove the rear or the internal ends of this hydraulic coupler. And then after that, I'll share with you guys how to make this yourself. On this corner of the table, I have the custom tool which I previously fabricated. I have a drill which I'll be using and I have the handsaw. If you guys do not have a handsaw and or if you guys have electric tools, you can use those as well. This tool was fabricated by hand. Not, there was no machining done to this. So it's just a cruel way of making your own custom tool to remove the insert on the hydraulic coupler. This was previously a 7 16 bolt. Once I had the bolt, I cut this bolt closer to the bottom where there was no thread. So I cut that off and this is what I was left with. This was a solid piece of material from the head going down. What I then wanted to do was to grab a drill. This drill happens to be .344 for the metric guys out there. 8.75 millimeters. Once the bolt was cut to length, I made a center punch in the middle of this bolt and I drilled it out with the drill. I went about a quarter inch down into the bolt itself. Once that was to the depth of my liking, I then took the handsaw and cut in a triangle so three different angles on this bolt to then come up with this special shape this special shape is very important and that will allow you to remove this insert which has three prongs on it and it is threaded into the hydraulic coupler main body. When you are finished with your custom tool, you are then able to push the custom tool down into the body from the back, grab around the insert and remove the insert from the body. This is the only way to remove this insert. You will need this custom tool. I'm over here at the vise. I have most of the tools which I had on that bench over there brought over here. I have the electric hand drill, which I will be using to clean this up. And I will share with you guys my way of disassembling this hydraulic coupler. Just like that, I'll set that aside. The next thing that I will be removing is this 916 fitting on the rear end of this hydraulic coupler. On the other one that I already rebuilt, I noticed that it was merged with red Loctite on this thread. So I had to have the breaker bar with a 916 socket on it. So I'll clamp the body in the vise and remove the fitting with the 916 socket. So 
that's pretty tight in there. You guys can see that. There's a little bit of residue from the red Loctite that they previously used to assemble this. Um, so this will have to be cleaned up later on, but not right now. Now, since this body is still together, I will clamp it in the vise. I will grab it on both ends of the coupler. I will clamp it in the vise, leave it sticking up just a little bit like that. And now I'll grab the electric drill and polish this hydraulic coupler. I polished up the lower half of the coupler body and I polished up the sleeve part. Now the next step is to grab our flathead screwdriver, pull back the seal, find the end, which is right here of the C-clip and push this up and off. It's fairly easy to take that off. As you guys can see, I just pried on one end. Now it's halfway on. Just grab it by hand and it'll just pop off like that. You can set this aside. Make sure you slowly back this sleeve off because there is a spring underneath it. And make sure you don't lose any of those bearing balls in case they're still good. This right here is the sleeve. We have the spring, which is still in great condition. It was still retracting just fine. And right here, we have all eight bearing balls. These bearing balls I'll put just on the table over there, but I will make sure that they're all together. Since I removed all eight bearing balls, this is how the coupler body looks like. Inside, we still have our O-ring. For that, I'll use the O-ring pick. I'll go down in there and grab on it. And it's relatively easy to pull out this O-ring. And just like that, the O-ring is out. Everything up until this step was fairly simple. If you guys made your custom tool, I'll share with you guys the next step. For the next step, we will need the 5 8 and 3 quarter wrench. I have the hydraulic coupler right here and the custom insert tool. So I will take the hydraulic coupler and on the back end, I will insert down in there the custom tool. I'll drop it in like that and I will push it down like that. And that's really tight in there. I'll grab the 5 8 wrench hook it up to the end of the custom tool, open up the vise, I will pop it in the vise, make sure that the vise is just touching the hydraulic coupler gently, that it doesn't go anywhere but it's still a little bit loose like that, and then I'll grab the 3 quarter inch wrench. This might seem very tight because it actually is, but the, the goal is to loosen off the hydraulic coupler with the custom tool. And just like that, it's slowly backing it off. And now since I'm loosening this off, I have to loosen off the vise as well. I only have it in the vise to give me a little guide and a little bit of help instead of just fighting this all together on the bench. And then when I feel that it's actually pretty loose with the three quarter inch wrench, I can take this whole assembly and loosen it off by hand in midair. Just like that, now I can probably even do it by hand. So now I'll share with you guys how that looks like when I remove the insert. Should be free right now, just like that. There's still a whole bunch of oil on there. And now what will come out is the spring and the bearing ball. And just like that, you guys can see through the hydraulic coupler 
and over here is the main bearing ball and the spring. This was the hydraulic coupler which I shared with you guys before and this is the most previous one I disassembled. Everything has been cleaned and set on this table. The main body of the hydraulic coupler looks much better now. There is still a little bit of staining down below. I tried my best to clean that flat surface out but when I turn it around that surface is pristine and there's no rust whatsoever so this hydraulic coupler body is in perfect condition moving ahead there is one issue and that is the main bearing ball when i share with you guys a close-up on this bearing ball you will see the bearing ball has rust on the surface i did not want to clean this up because i wanted to share with you guys what your bearing ball may look like this has rust on the surface. Now, if I would clean that rust off, there may be a minimal amount of pitting, but I do not want to take that off and then reuse this bearing ball. It is possible that you take this apart and your bearing ball is still in great condition, like the one over here on this coupler. This bearing ball shows no flaw anywhere, and it is still in pristine and usable condition. This bearing ball, however, will need to be replaced because of the rust. And if you look at it very closely, there is a different shade of gray on the bearing ball. And that is also a dent in the bearing ball. From sitting in the same position for a long time and always opening and closing within the hydraulic coupler body, the bearing ball may deform. That's what happened to this bearing ball. So this bearing ball, right here, which is 11 30 seconds of an inch, will be replaced with this brand new bearing right here. This bearing is brand new, and this will be installed into this hydraulic coupler right here. Back over here on the vise, I have all of the parts from the hydraulic coupler laid out. I have the wrenches and the tools, which I'll be using. So let me give you guys a close-up view on the reassembly and once I use the products, I'll share with you guys why I use them. I just shared with you guys the disassembly process on the hydraulic couplers, the tools that I use, and the special tool that I fabricated for this procedure. I did use the assembly grease and the Loctite for the reassembly of this hydraulic coupler. The grease is just to lube everything up before it gets assembled, and the Loctite is to secure that fitting into the body of the hydraulic coupler. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I will have more how-to videos and I will have some cool upcoming projects. So as always, stay tuned.